Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor. Today, we are going to talk about cone tops. If you don't know what a cone top is, a cone top is what they used before they had the pull tabs on cans. Before modern cans existed, they used to have what was on a bottle, a bottle cap on a can, and it had a cone top that looked like a glass can on the top. Now, they use these for everything because the modern-day soda can or beer can did not exist, so they were doing the best they could at the time. So nowadays, those are extremely scarce because a ton of those were recycled, and ones that weren't recycled could have been thrown away, or they could have just been trashed and deteriorated. So when these are found, they usually go for some insane amounts of money, real nice ones. Now, most products had some sort of cone top at one time, but we're going to only talk about the ones that will bring you the most money. Let's head on over the right now and show you exactly what we're talking about. Cone tops, just like any other category, the majority of what you will find won't be worth a ton of money. The top 5 or 10% in this category can hold some good values. There are some other ones that you need to worry about because there are some fantasy pieces where someone took a bad cone top and put a newer label on it and then coated it to make it look like it was a vintage can. Those are called fantasy pieces and you need to know and be aware of those. Most of the ones I'll show you today, there wouldn't be any fantasy pieces though, but you never know. So always be cautious and know what a true cone top looks like, what the quality is, what the tone and finish should be as well. This first one here is a Utica Club Sparkling Ale. This is an old beer can. The beer can ones for some of these can go for the most amount of money. This one went for $2,342 for an empty can, something that's disposable in most of the world. 36 bids, just a perfect example of what some of these can sell for. Now here's a Red Lion Ale cone top as well. Most of these carry a value. Now this is an IRTP can, Internal Revenue Taxes Paid. That's just something that was on these between a certain time, so you can always date these by that. Now there are price guides for these as well, which will help you identify them, date them, and be able to tell which version of some of these cans there are. In some instances, there's four and five different versions of the same basic can. Some versions will sell for way more than what the other ones were. In this category, condition is everything, so the better the can, the more value it will hold. This one's $1,402. Now here's a John Bull cone top can. I believe this is a British one, if I'm not mistaken. $1,175. Now at the top of these would just be a beer cap, bottle cap at the very top, just like you would have found on a glass bottle of the time. Nice example, excellent condition. Even with some patina to the top cone part, they'll still go. I've also seen rusted out ones sell for almost a thousand bucks in the past, depending on the type of the can. Now here's Stagmeyer's Ale, another nice one. The color scheme usually helps them sell. Again, as you can see, there is some rust at the top. That is typical on some of these, but the printed material of the can is nice. That is the best part of these. $1,086, 43 bids, legitimate sale here to say the least. Now this is English Lab. This is out of Chicago, Prima Brewing Company. One full quart of beer, $838. Now there's different size versions of these as well in many different varieties. So you have to be aware of that. There's some massive quantity size ones, which we'll show you towards the end of this. This is a full quart, which is much bigger than the standard beer can of the day. Now here's a Blatt's beer can. This is in primo top condition. Probably one of the nicest ones I have seen of one of these. Most of the modern beer, as long as they were around back then, had cone top cans. And most all of of them will sell for some insane amounts of money. I turn up stuff like this, not in this good condition, of course, but in basements, garages, attics, and barns all the time. I also can find them at estate sales and local live antique auctions. Really nice piece for $816. Now here's a Wacker beer. This is a little different construction than most because of the shape. It doesn't have an applied neck like most of the other ones do. $787 on this one, 23 bids. This is a variety of cone tops. As I said, there are many different varieties and styles as well. This is a Gluck's beer can, nice one, excellent condition. Now there is a way to clean some of these, but I would never ever clean one of these at all. And as you can see, they put the top back on it so it does have the bottle cap on the top. It's always better to have the bottle cap on these than not, of course. $766.56, again, 33 bids, and a phenomenal sale on this one as well. 
Now this is an Ertels 92. This is a very scarce one. This is pulled out of one piece basically without again having that applied ring around the top. So interesting piece, $750. Now here's a Murphy's Ale. Excellent graphics on this one. I love the turquoise color in this one. The scheme just strings out 1940s and 50s to me. You can't beat it. You see a cap on it too. Many people will just put another cap on it that's plain just to satisfy the need of a collector. Most collectors want to see a cap of some sort on it. Three bids, $743. Remember, too, as well, these are disposable items. These were meant to be thrown away or recycled. That's why they carry such an insane amount of money when they sell. Now, this is an old Vienna-type beer. Very interesting. Wapakoneta, Ohio. I've seen this can around here. This one does show up. It's not too far from where I live. Just like most of the items that I sell, this is something most people don't think has a value, especially if there's some rust on the cans. I can usually get a decent one at a barn sale sale, an estate sale, a garage sale, in a basement attic, any one of these places for just a few bucks in many cases. Again, especially if they have some rust, as I said, but they still carry a nice value. $660 on this one. Now here's an early Lisco Lager. This is a very scarce one. The pattern is really nice on this one. It has an Art Deco design to the lettering. Now this one's faded. It has some issues with the color, but it's still a very nice can. $550 on this one. It's a little off the top, has some patina and some toning to it, but it's still, as I said, a very lovely can. Now here's a Monarch beer. Again, IRTP, Internal Revenue Taxes Paid. That will be marked on the can, and you can always date a can or a bottle or anything of that sort with that marking to a specific time frame. So always keep that in mind on things like this. Now, there aren't many fakes of these, even like the fantasy pieces I was talking about. What people do for the fantasy pieces is they'll take a just a junk brand or a damaged can that already exists vintage one and then add some labels and coat it and polish it and the whole works to it so just be careful as i said but they will never look this good ever none of the fantasy cans look this sharp 517 dollars. this is an immaculate can i am a little surprised it didn't go for a little more just because of the condition of this thing looks like it was just rolled off the showroom to me now, as I said, beer cone top cans sell the best. The highest price you will find will be mostly on the beer ones. The next one down are soda cans. Now, there's some soda cans that can sell into those same price ranges, but they're few and far between these days. There have been beer can collectors for much longer than soda can collectors, so that's part of the issue there with this one. This is a bottoms-up soda. This was manufactured by Coca-Cola Company. This is a good example of one of those Coke products. Another one for, say, Pepsi would be Team. Pepsi did a brand called Team back in the 60s and 70s. Many of these go for more than the standard Coca-Cola can because they're much scarcer and harder to come by. This does say Coca-Cola on the can as well. And this one went for $424. Now, this next one is a high-grade, very high-grade Queen O orange soda. Now, some of these may have been given away as samples as well, and that's why some of the conditions are so good on some of these. I'm not really sure what they did back in those days on these, but occasionally I'll run into one that looks like it never had anything in it, no marks from being bottled with the cap or anything. In other cases, I run across some that look like they're original and sealed with nothing in it. I do find modern-day cans like that that were promo, so that would be my guess on some of these. $404 on this very scarce one. Now here's a massive sized one. As I said earlier, they come in many different sizes. This is for a gallon of Coca-Cola syrup, fountain syrup. This is how it would have been sent to a restaurant in some cases. There are five gallon buckets and things, but not cone tops, I believe, of five gallon sizes. We see these occasionally. They don't go for a ton of money, 171 bucks. This one's in pretty good condition. If you're lucky, you can run into these sometimes for 20 to 50 bucks and then flip them from there as well. Now, if this has a paper label on it, they can go for more than some of the applied color labels that you will see on these jugs here, these cone top syrup cans. Nice example, though, either way you go. And this last one is a later model Pepsi Cola can. Now, the better ones on these would have two dots between the word Pepsi and Cola. That is how you can date some of the Pepsi items. If you see two dots, it's usually World War II or earlier for some of these. This is a nice one as well. It has an original cap, or at least they've applied another cap. At one time, if I'm not mistaken, you could have bought a bottle or this can at the very same time. This pattern is one of the more popular ones. The 
There are some better Pepsi cans that can go for almost eight, nine hundred dollars though. So keep your eye out on these. So even if these have rust or even possibly a hole or two in it, they can still sell for some good money. But that's what I have for you today. Well, there you are. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Pilots wear them, skydivers wear them, racing drivers wear them. And now you can join the men of action with the most amazing speed helmet ever made, the exciting new Super Helmet 7. A foot, a float, racing, driving, bike riding helps keep you safe even at night. Only Super Helmet 7 does all this. One, red flasher signals automatically. Two, tinted goggles protect your eyes. Three, left and right direction lights. Four, reflector shows you're up ahead. Five, warning buzzer clears the way. Six, Super Helmet 7 absorbs the shock. Seven, powerful headlight flashlight. It's removable. Boys who dare will want to wear new Super Helmet 7. Super Helmet 7. Super Helmet 7.